3,000 Years of Longing is directed by George Miller. That's right, while he's out filming Furiosa right now, we get an existential fairy tale for adults. A lonely scholar, played by Tilda Swinton, on a trip to Istanbul, discovers a djinn, played by Idris Elba, who offers her three wishes in exchange for his freedom. That's the plot synopsis that's on IMDb, but I certainly wouldn't describe the movie in that way. And we'll get into the review very soon, but first I want to give a big thank you to the sponsor for this video, Keeps. Two out of three guys will experience hair loss by the time they're 35. Keeps offers clinically proven research-backed treatments to stop hair loss and improve hair growth. With Keeps, you can get quality expert care without ever visiting a doctor's office or pharmacy. All Keeps treatment plans are doctor-recommended and delivered straight to your door at about half the cost of a traditional pharmacy. Each treatment plan comes with a full year of unlimited messaging so you can connect with your prescribing doctor about anything, anytime. Whether you're looking to prevent hair loss, stimulate hair growth, or just take better care of the hair you have, Keeps has you covered. In addition to clinically proven treatments, Keeps has an award-winning all-natural thickening shampoo and conditioner system. Keeps physicians will help you select the right products and treatments for your specific condition and hair goals. Easily subscribe to Keeps and get refill reminders so you'll never run low on the products you need to take care of your hair. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off your first order, please visit keeps.com slash Chris Stuckman. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Chris Stuckman. This is one of the weirdest movies I've seen in years. If you guys have followed my channel for a long time, you know that I really love weird movies and I love films that take risks that don't feel like every other movie that's out right now or has ever been out really. If you were to really boil down the plot, this woman releases a gin into her hotel and he sits down with her and tells her a lot of stories. These stories are sort of cautionary tales about why she should or shouldn't wish for something, but they end up becoming a lot more once you finish the film. And of course, I won't get into any spoilers because I'm assuming the majority of you haven't seen this film because it didn't really do that well at the box office, which is no surprise with a title like 3,000 Years of Longing, a beautiful poster, but one that doesn't really evoke anything, and two stars who are incredibly talented but aren't going to bring in the kids to the theater, so to speak. And with Mad Max and Furiosa not in this movie, it's not going to bring in George Miller's fan base of people who think he only makes Mad Max movies and are unaware that he has one of the most eclectic filmographies ever, having directed such films as Babe, Pig in the City, Lorenzo's Oil, Happy Feet, of course the Mad Max films, and now this. You really can't tie George Miller down. He's really someone who does pretty much whatever the fuck he wants, and I love that about him because this movie is very much so a movie that could only be made by a filmmaker who does whatever the fuck they want. <laughs> And it's going to challenge people and it's going to frustrate audiences. But if you are the kind of viewer who's okay with not grasping a film's meaning 100% on the first viewing, who's okay with not understanding every little thing that's happening until the end, if you're okay with your eye wandering away from Tilda Swinton while she's walking through her house and noticing the set decoration and realizing that said set decoration is actually important to the story, then you might really enjoy 3,000 Years of Longing. But if you don't like any of those things, and you want to understand a film immediately and never think deeply about anything, well, you might fucking hate this. Kind of like the person sitting behind me in the theater tonight who often sneered and made jokes about every single thing that happened in the film. I'm not even kidding. Every time there was a moment of silence, this person sitting in the theater had to fill it with a comment. And it made me think about the state of film, but more specifically the state of the audience nowadays and how we've become so accustomed to getting answers immediately and understanding what everything means immediately and not really thinking deeply about anything and just wanting to be mindlessly taken away to some kind of escapist entertainment. And I love that shit. Trust me, I've seen Top Gun Maverick many times this year. It's incredible. It's a masterpiece, I think. But I also appreciate films like this, ones that can be very frustrating and even a little flawed, but that seem to have something to say and that spend a lot of money saying it in a very grand way. These are types of things that don't really happen that much anymore. For a film filled with voiceover, it is by no means a simple film. There's quite a bit going on under the surface. You can look at the tales that Idris Elba as this djinn tells, and you can look at them in a very literal way and assume that all of these things are true and that they happened. But there's other ways to look at those stories too in relation to our protagonist played by Tilda Swinton. And there's a lot of things that kind of come to a head in the final moments that make you think about it differently. But there's also some frustrating things 
too. Just when I thought I had figured out what George Miller was trying to say, some things occurred in the film that made that feel meaningless. And so at times, 3,000 Years of Longing, while beautiful and absolutely insane and very well directed with an amazing sound design and score, it can get on your nerves as well because you're longing, perhaps not for 3,000 years, but while you're sitting in the theater to fully grasp exactly what George Miller is trying to say, and that can be difficult. But Tilda Swinton and Idris Elba are magnificent in this film for a movie that hinges very much so on their chemistry and them essentially being in a room discussing stories I found them riveting. There's a lot of CGI in the film and some of it is beautiful and some of it is distractingly unfinished. There's a shot early on in the film where Tilda Swinton is standing in her hotel room and at this point Idris Elba is basically giant behind her and as she turns her head slowly I could see the edges of her skin moving and shifting. That shot was just not finished. But I would ask lovers of film to go check this movie out, especially in theaters, because like I said, any time a film like this comes out, even if it's not perfect, even if it is flawed, which I do think this film is, I think there's a lot to glean from it. And I think that there's definitely an experience to enjoy here. And I think that it could potentially inspire some people and make them think about filmmaking or storytelling in a very unique way. Any time a filmmaker paints on such a broad scale like this, you should go check it out. Even though it's no Mad Max Fury Road hell, it's not even a babe pig in the city. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course, but I do think this movie is worth seeing on a big screen, especially if you're a fan of George Miller or either of these two masterful actors. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Look forward to more videos very soon. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.